what's going on YouTube it's the old soldier coming at you from Robinson County North Carolina weather has warmed up a little bit today and I think we're supposed to get some rain over the weekend from one of these hurricanes that is passing through the area um, with a warm up in temperatures a little bit but <laughs> a couple young men from school but uh, yeah temperatures starting to warm up a little bit again but I don't think we're going to get back into the extreme highs that we had over the summer I think fall is definitively taking hold down here said I think we're in for an early fall here but anyhow anyhow anyway um so I got a phone call from my contractor yesterday about my new house about a week ago he called and said it's gonna be about two hundred ten thousand dollars it's counting demo and new house why because price increases in materials and manufacturer etc so forth well called yesterday as he's trying to finalize our contract so we can get the mortgage company to release the insurance money to start rebuilding, etc. so forth, because I guess more bad news. So what's that? It's about another thirty-five hundred dollar cost increase. And he said, he says, I'm gonna split that with you. Split the difference. He says, if another one comes down, he says, I'm just gonna eat it. I, said, well, I appreciate that. But they can't help that the manufacturer and the suppliers are increasing prices, but lumber folks has darn near tripled overnight I went to Lowe's two weeks ago and bought some 2x4s and 2x6s and they had doubled at that point I went back and looked the other day they have tripled tripled, this is wood folks that's what I've been talking about this trickle down snowball effect, I think I might have talked about it the day before yesterday in the video but the impact is real with this virus pandemic shutting everything down. You know, we need to get America back to work, folks. We need to get America back to work. If not, the, the, the worst case scenario of this event could be an economic depression. It's a worst case scenario. But not like the Great Depression of the 1920s because, or the late 1920s through the 30s because the stock market crashed. And up until that point in time, there was work to be had. The economy was doing fairly well in the United States. And really, had the government not got involved, what was the Great Depression it might have just been a bad recession and the market would have righted itself. But different time, different measures of taking care of things. My point being is this, that if they don't get Americans back to work soon, producing and making products, goods, and services, you can have a climatic, or I say climatic, poor choice of words, a dramatic impact, a catastrophic impact on the economy. I say catastrophic, see people losing all they have, and it's not because they've done anything wrong, it's because we've been allowed to be so scared to let people go to work and do the things they need to do. Okay. And it's living in fear, and, I, and, I, and the politicians are Excavating this whole situation. Um, the left more than the right. But plan the, I'm not going to do anything unless I get what I want my way. The other side's playing, if you're going to act like a child, I'm going to treat you like a child and send you to the room with no supper. The sad part is, at the end of the day, we, the American people, are suffering from their childish actions. need to do is relax restrictions and 
orders, not laws, orders that have prohibited people from going back to work. Let them get back to work. Yeah, right now I, I see trucks going up and down the interstate with goods. Okay, and there's still grocery stores and things open, but the rate things are going. If you think because building materials are going up in price because of shortages, soon food products will be in short supply. If we're not careful, if we don't allow people to get back to work. Case example here in Robinson County, we have a Campbell Soup Factory. I don't know how many people they employ, but they employ a significant amount of people. If there's a food shortage, that means they will eventually come short on the ingredients they need to make their world famous soups. The snowball effect there is the less ingredients, the less soup they can make, the less soup they can make, the less people they can employ. So now they're going to be forced to lay people off. When you lay somebody off, they have no means of income, no means of income, no means of support. See how this continues to snowball down the way. That's why it's another reason it's crucial to get out and vote in person in November. Because we need to put people in office, people who give a darn about this country, about the people of this country, and get them back to work. It's just, you know, my, I'm going to call it a prediction. It's just a scenario that could have, potentially happen at the, way, at the rate things are going. Okay. When I was a kid in the 70s, they had the gas crisis. Now, I was young. I really didn't realize what was going on. Um, but I can remember gas prices almost doubling, if not tripling, overnight. And I remember my dad complaining about it when he was able to get a gallon of gas for 15 cents a gallon. 15 cents a gallon! To almost 35, 40 cents a gallon in a matter of weeks. Freaking idiot! Pardon me, like I got hit head on because somebody was passing when they ought not have been. Um, forgive me for my outburst, folks. But their rush to get somewhere is not as important as my life. Back to where we were at. The, uh, Oil shortage of the 70s. If it wasn't really a shortage, it was just OPEC, which was the conglomerate of Arab nations controlling the output and input of oil, opted to hold the world hostage by controlling oil prices. So they decided to up the price of oil. And it created a shortage here in the U.S. of gasoline. Yeah, I remember that one. I I don't remember all the impacts, but I remember my dad talking about it, my mom, you know, how it was going to impact things that were, uh, that we did every day. Going to the supermarket, going to the department store, because the price of gas going up, the consumer always eats these increases. I don't care what these companies say. They eventually the cost gets passed to the consumer. That's the other snowball effect of here. The consumer has to pay more for goods and services because the vendor's having to do the same thing on their end. So again, at the end of the day, the cost gets passed to me and you when we buy those goods and services. Sometimes it's just gotta happen that way, but you know, anyway. Enough of my rambling, complaining, and outburst, folks. 
Y'all stay safe out there. God bless. Take care. And uh, talk to you tomorrow. So, so, ground.